Uh, oh, it's loud. So, thank you for coming. Uh, I'm very glad to see you here. There is such a nice weather outside, and you're still here, uh, ready to get some new study, uh, some <laughs> ready to start, ready to study something new. Sorry, what, 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 what do you make with my presentation? You need slides. I, I, I have slides, and you broke it. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's nice, and I have iPhone. Oh, that's it's, great. it's, I can control my presentation from iPhone. It's a great opportunity for to test this device. So uh, let's begin. My name is Anton Shane. I'm a designer at Yandex, and to, boom, to be more specific, I am lead designer of SERP, which is Search Engine Result Page. You see that page every time you. Uh, uh, search for something on Yandex. And SERP is the driven product. You can't just design it, every page of it, because the new page generated every time with any request. And you have a millions of pages every day generated. So the only way of, to work on it is to create a design system. And to work with design system, the best approach is to use code. And all designers in my team have a coding skills and use it every day. Uh, and I will tell you about how we get here and why we do it. So my presentation will consist of three main parts. At the start, we will discuss what design system is. Yeah, this is a very broad concept. After it, I will tell you why code is the best tool for designer to work with design system. And at the end, I will briefly show you some tools we used and developed. So, what design system is? Actually, design system consists of several parts. And the first part is components. Everyone know about components. You just take your design, split it into chunks, and uh, I call it components and can use it in uh, every time again in your product. But if you only have a bunch of components, it's not a design system. To sort out your components, you need some methodology to do it. And most known of it is uh, BAM. Of course, I, I'm from Yandex, I, and there is no presentation from Yandex can be without uh, mention of BAM. And, but BAM is just only about blocks, and in BAM, all is a block. Entire page is a block. And uh, um, this little guy, little guy is a block. And the part of this little guy is a block, and so on. And there is no difference between whole page and just a link on this page. It's not very convenient to use in design, so we have to choose uh, something other, like a most known atomic design. Raise your hands, who know what is atomic design? Not all, so I will briefly talk about it. So in atomic design, you split your uh, components on several classes, like uh, atoms, it's most simple blocks, like just a button. And Atoms combining into molecules is just a button with a label. And then they create organisms. It's more complicated blocks. And then they create templates for pages. And then pages with data and so on. But I have no time to talk about in detail. So if you want, just go to the breadfrost.com and watch some videos. So, but the atomic design it's just a basic methodology. And when you try to create something on it, you will adapt it to your product. For example, GE company created Predix design system, which built on top of atomic design. And uh, they changed the naming, changed the decomposition of blocks, and changed classes of blocks, but it's still a design system based on atomic. And when you will create your system, you uh, have to just read all about you can find on the internet and then make your own methodology. Because only you know what uh, your product needs. So I need some water. But even if you have methodology and a bunch of blocks, you have to create some rules to stick together that blocks into the product. And what, with, um, what kind of rules we have? As for example, 
grids. Uh, no, not grids yet. <laughs> Just a constant. You know, no, every, how many developers in the audience? Please slice the hands. So everyone knows about constants. I will skip it. So then you need a grid uh, which uh, make a vertical rhythm and align all your, all your blocks on the page. And even if, if, and even if you have reads, you need typography system. In different screens, in different screens typography, typography will be different. And constants are not enough to work with it. And if you work with color, uh, you have to create rules to combine them. It's about, not about constants, it's about some rules for doing that. And there are a lot of different uh, kind of rules, like uh, animation speed, type of animation, behavior of your blocks, and so on. But even if you have components, methodology, rules, you have to create documentation. Because if uh, no one knows about your rules, no one will follow it, yeah? So, and basic approach to create documentation is to it's write a long guideline with uh, uh, hundreds of pages and to, or create master sketch files with your components. And after it, you have to choose a warden. This is a designer who will look after all you other designers and uh, reject all, all their fresh ideas. So, you shall then go on with uh, this fresh idea. You will not pass. Just use our standard components and uh, so on. And everyone hates this guy, yeah? N not this particular guy, this is Gandalf. Everyone loves Gandalf, he's a nice old man. So, uh, when you have all of this, you can start. And from what point you should start? You just take all your mess you've done before, sort it out. I spend a lot of time on this animation. Uh, and Make some rules, uh, take a, uh, make a documentation, choose a warden, and you get it. You have a design system. Yeah, it's cool, it's nice, but, but no. It was an easiest part. The real fun begins when you try to maintain this system. Because it's hard, you, your product is always evolving. And if you don't maintain your system, and it became a museum of components. And um, how does it happen? For example, you have created documentation for this component, we call it showcase, and uh, uh, think through all possible combination of it, and say to all your designers, just use it components, it's great, it's nice. But then, at some point, designers came to you and say, Father, forgive me, I'm a sinner. I have made a custom component for a recipe. And I need this little tiny gray subtitle for it. And he asks you, can I use it, please? And what, what you can answer to him? You can say, no. Just use our standard components. Uh, or you can say, um, OK. Uh, in a month, we will have a meeting of design system lords, and we review your design. And maybe, maybe, we include it to our standard component. And then, after two or three months, you will be able to use it. This approach uh, turns your system to the museum, because your product needs new features every time. And you have uh, to be able to edit in any time. But if you will just uh, edit any feature at any time and do nothing, your system will be turned to the swamp, just uh, to a lot of components. So what is the right approach? Uh, the first thing is do what you want, do, do what your product needs, and then refactor it. And developers know what's refactoring, but designers doesn't. And when I say refactor it, I don't mean that refactoring code. I mean refactoring your component system. Because 
after you refactor it, you may uh, came to the situation that you have two showcases, or another two showcases, or you just create uh, one for all situations, or just you say that uh, okay, uh, this you can use this little ti a little gray title, but don't. Uh, but we not will include it in our component framework. It will believe uh, something else, and if it still have the same colors, same constants, same, same grid system, and same typography, it can live separately. And it's like an evolution. Every time you have mutation, and strong mutation uh, live and became the new blocks, and the weak mutation just uh, cut it off. And it's natural, it's worked for nature for millions of years, I don't know, and it definitely can work for your product. But how you will maintain your design system? For example, you change your component, component and if you're doing your design in the graphic editors, how you will be able to update all your designs? You have to do it manually. And here is why my presentation is called Design and Code. When you work with code, you have uh, some advantages. And it's this advantage is not for only for developers, it's for designers too. And what kind of advantages we have? For example, um, when you develop the blog, you uh, fix all the rules in the code, and designers who use your component have, uh, doesn't have to think about the rules. He just used the component, component and all colors, all grid system, all uh, bunch of the rules, it's just worked. And uh, it's simple to use. You can just put button, then action, then action. And uh, it will be yellow or green or blue. It uh, depends on which your current state of uh, com component design system. Um, and it's easy to update all your designs as you work with code. For example, you have a uh, hot hotel lists, and then you uh, decide to change the price view or something. And if you're working with in graphic editors, you should uh, update it's all uh, element by element by the hand. And you work with code, we just connect other version of, of the block and use it and all design will update automatically. And uh, if you work with design, you can just use se API, same API to create your design. You haven't to create it one by one. And of course, it's uh, much more convenient for developer to use, to develop your actual design when you do it in code. Uh, hmm. And there is one more thing. When you want, when designer work in code, he have to think through all the design, and find many corner cases, and it saves a lot of time in development stage. But uh, you can use different kind of code, and if designers can, they should use same stack of technology as developer use, because you will have the same terminology, the same structure of your code, and with little more effort, your code can, your design can be used right in the product production. So, but it isn't always possible. And for example, we don't use production stack. We have our technologies, why? Because designers and developers have different goals and different approaches. Developer often knows, uh, a, often have a picture of the end result in mind. And uh, designers have iterated through many, many different variants of design to find the best solution. And you have to do it very quick. And all stuff the developers have to improve their code, like linters, like a code style, version control system, pull requests, um, and so on. It's very helpful in development stage. When you just try, when you use code.
code for design is just uh, slow down you. And designers, if, and, if, and if it slows down you, you have to create your own design tools. And uh, what tool does, do we have? And to say about it, I will start with a story, how we came here. So it's all begin, began uh, four years ago. There is 2013. There is no React yet. yet. Flexbox is just a working draft. And uh, we're working on the huge redesign of SERP. And to make development easier, we started to create specification. It's just a notation. Uh, make it over on top of design to show developers which uh, margins, font sizes, and colors should you use. And it, will be, it was helping. But um, it's almost doubled time for designers to do it. If we have to find some uh, automation for it. Yeah, we even think about hiring interns for this job. For this dirty job, <laughs> as interns always do, do dirty job. And then uh, solutions came naturally. I broke my right hand. And I am a right-handed person. For a few months, I can't hold a pen or mouse. And uh, what should I do? I start typing with uh, one left hand, line by line. And after a week, I have uh, prototypes of design. And then I spend a week to make auto specificator, which is make specification with hotkey in automatic mo mode, and you haven't sp uh, spent time for it. And it was so convenient that other designers uh, started to use this tool too. But then we have other problem. And you know it. It's bomb classes, class names. And when you try to write it in, by the hand, it's uh, routine. And I start thinking, ah, oh, I need some template yeah, template But there is no React yet, yeah? yeah? And uh, then I met Daniel Kovci, and he asked me, have you ever used XSLT template? Uh, raise your hands, who knows what XSLT is? Oh, it's good. <laughs> but didn't say to me that it only will be free hands, maybe. Uh, and who knows what XML is? Oh, it's OK. So XSLT is a language for transform your XML. You have a source file with data. You have a template, which is a valid XML2. And when you apply your template to your data, you will have result XML or HTML. And it's just an example from Wikipedia. And the uh, working example looks like that. It's about hundreds uh, line of code. And when I first time see it, I said, uh, no. <laughs> no, thank you. I, 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 I can do it. But then Daniela showed me his prototype of SOAP, which worked with live data. He just put request and started searching. And then uh, he get the results in, uh, with new design based on real data. And it was so cool that I spent effort and studied XSLT and other designers too. I don't believe it that we made it, but it was. And we used it uh, for a year, I think. And then we decided that um, it's good, but it's still mind-blowing. Because when you try to study, to uh, teach new designer to use XLT, it's a painful process. You, you have to broke the, this man, and he will cry, actually. It's all, I see many tears. <laughs> uh, so we created alternative to XLT, and it was written by ourselves uh, framework. It works like XLT, but have all advantages of using uh, JavaScript. And we work with it a year, I think. But um, 
while we use it, we found a lot of ways to improve it. And then we create another <laughs> framework. We call it Beast and we use it now. Um, and let me briefly show you uh, features why we love it. And from the beginning, it's uh, complicated stuff. So uh, when you just can't get it from from first time, just maybe you watch video later and catch it. So let's I try it. The first thing is syntax. It looks like XML or JS6 if you want, and uh, this syntax is uh, is with BAM notation. We have a blocks. It starts with capital, and we have elements. And designer can use it as like a like a magic HTML. We create the blocks, and other designers just put their data on it and use it. And it's very convenient. And other stuff is a strict API. When you're designing a component, you put some logic on it, and look uh, to the code. On the on the right on the left. on the left <laughs> on the left um, there are three pieces of code and all of them doing the uh, same result and order of elements uh, mix it but result the same and in last example we have a strange element called ha 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 but we have no this element on the result because it's strict API. You can't hack it. And the other advantage is, ah, so it's not other advantage, it's just we can do it with expand function. You just say that we declare the block fact and then we put in it element title, then element text, and then we add it element you see all the time. And it's so convenient, so we love it. And other, it was, it was an easy part, by the time. The hard part is we use inheritance. Remember that I say we have to stick to the rules, like a grid system. And when you work with graphic editors, you have to remember all, the, all that rules. But working with code, you can just say block thumb should inherit grid. And then you can just say that block thumb should be three column wide or four column wide. And it's work. You even don't know well, which size of column you use. You just use it. And it's work nice. And the last example <laughs> is the implementation. I see you bore it, but it's okay. It's a complicated task. So, uh, implementation, how it works. For example, you have this snippet, and you have button in the bottom of it. And the button, if this is a call element, and traditional way to do it is just uh, take a snippet, put call element on it, and then put button block inside of it. It's not very convenient. In uh, Beast, you can just say that, uh, oh, I don't know. You don't see and uh, Of course, I just tried to explain it. You can do this stuff. You can say that call element is the button block in the same time. And when you try to attach event to the call element to this button. You just uh, find the element. You don't have to find the button inside of it. So oh, I realize that it's too complicated. When I try to speak it in front of myself, I think, oh, it's clear. It's nice. We, we definitely have a good stuff. But, I, but now I see all your faces and you, what does he say? What about it? <laughs> Implementation of what? It's okay. So thank you. <laughs> it's good. But this is just on a template, and you can use any other technology. Okay, you can use Re React. Yes, <laughs> everyone loves React now, for now. And uh, the other 
tool is Debot. What Debot is? The Debot has a documentation system for its blocks. And we have a libraries. And we have a libraries for standard components. Uh, and we have libraries for mutation block. And it's different library. It's very convenient. When you create the mutation, you just put it in another library. And time to time, you review this library's list and uh, just sort it off. No, every, every, every library have a block list, and we have a documentation of it for every block we used. <laughs> and um, we have a constant integrated into Depot, and different constant is uh, for different platforms. And we have a support for different pl platforms, but uh, the slide it will be next. Uh, so <laughs> I'm just uh, say it too early. So, and what does this slide here? Okay. <laughs> uh, the most important thing, we have uh, different versions of our, our blocks. It's, and this is very important. Why? When you create design, you always want to try different solutions. And for example, you want to try different solutions for this block. And how you can do it on Depot? You just create two versions of blocks. And then, when you open it in the browser, you just say in the URL that you want to include other version of this block. And you can experiment with this on the fly. You can, can change the buttons. You can change, uh, apply new controls or new showcases to this uh, to your design and check how uh, work of other designer will, uh, will, 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 I forgot this English word, <laughs> will, uh, I tried to say it in another word, other designer do some kind of work, <laughs> present simple. Uh, <laughs> and then, you just get the air block, apply it to your design, and how it, how it works in your design. So it's very convenient when you have a bunch of designers like Ansorb. And then we have support of different platforms. And um, we have a set of different constants for each platform. So if you have button block with different sizes in different platforms, you just uh, make it once and then just set different constants, and you will have this block on all platforms. And all of our tools is open sourced, but we have a lack of documentation. We have uh, not much time to do it. So we spent all time to make documentation for our blocks. But if you want to try it, you can just drop me a line, and I will ask you questions. And I see on that iPad that we have not much time left. <laughs> so let's uh, do a quick summary. Mm, it's easy to create design system, but it's hard to maintain it. And if you want to create your design system, and if you're a designer, you have to try to use code for it, because the code is the most convenient tool to this task. Involve your components. Don't turn your design system in a museum of components. And if you have a lack of uh, tool for your design system, you can just try Debot, fork it, or just ask us, and we will help you. So it was uh, Anton Shane. Um, and now we have a Q&A section. And I know that ask question in English is a tough task. If you know English is not well as I, so I had done my homework. And just to put some questions for you, uh, I, I have been asked these questions every time. So you just can type your, your question on Twitter or just ask some of these questions. I will have to answer it. So thank you. Oh, hey. Thank you. Please have a seat. Oh, finally. Yeah. Ah. We're a bit too far away, so I have to do this weird thing. Unite. <laughs> Yay. Can you see me? Right. Um, so I have some questions from Twitter. But uh, 
the first question for me. I, I was going to ask, do you force your designers to code? And then I saw XSLT and I thought, no, I, I'm not, I don't want to know this. Like it's, uh, no? It's sometimes you have to push slightly okay. your designer, but... Uh, until they break. But you can make him a choice. You can, uh, you can take him as a choice. Uh, you can choose. Uh, make a thousand of designs on Sketch or Photoshop for different situations, right. or just code the example on XSLT. Which do you find? The big okay. uh, answer is simple. Okay, uh, then we have a question from Twitter. It's the only place I check for questions, so like all of them are from Twitter. Um, uh, Dmitry asks, uh, how do you make developers and designers to follow style guide? Any tools, maybe? Uh, the depot. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it's tricky. Thing. Like code reviews or? No, there is no code reviews. We just have a, it's, the thing is, if you do convenient uh, tool, okay. the people will use it itself. If you uh, just uh, develop all the buttons, all the snippets and all other components, it's, and, it, and they are easy to use, the other people just do it. And sometimes, yes, we have our ups and downs, and sometimes we uh, abandon this system, and it grows and, uh, with uh, like a uh -huh. garden. Then what? What? What does it APA do? It's just dancing down, down, like say, like, discom, disc, <laughs> discom out. Uh, okay, like, just stretching you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I, I can't. <laughs> okay, I, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll turn it off. Okay. Uh, it's but, but there's a then in zero. <laughs> Sorry about that. And I, I try to think about questions and then I okay. look at it. Uh, let's move to the, to the next one then. Uh, Gleb is asking, uh, product or project managers, do they actually understand what design system is? Because they, they uh, wanted just a huge red button on the, on the middle of a screen. Or you have a product manager that code. You have to study <laughs> your product managers who teach them. <laughs> okay, so you train them as well. Yes, I train them as well. And let's okay. take a time. But it's always success. Is, 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 is there anyone at Yandex who don't code? Yes, it's many <laughs> other designers. Okay. I'm a sole designer, and we are strange people. We make a large product with, uh, which is data-driven. Data -driven. So other designers, someone use React, some just start to uh, continue to use uh, like a sketch or other graphic uh -huh. resources. Okay. And we use graphic editors too. We use sketch and for sketching. <laughs> yeah, that well. makes sense. Uh, does it mean that you have three versions? Uh, Jan from Twitter asks, uh, does it mean that you have to maintain three versions of the design? Sketch, components in HTML, and production code? Uh, yes, it, it's just like that. And we have code. And when you try to do uh, tricky stuff, like a development um, new product, you use code to mm -hmm. do it. And when you just need to quickly sketch some solution from the standard parts, you just make it in sketch. And that's that's, and, that's and, in the name. Uh, yeah, it's yes, sketch. And, and it's a good way. <laughs> We're working on uh, compiling the, our code to the sketch right. components. It's possible now because we have a new sketch format. But yeah, it's protein thing. Uh, is, it, is it something related where to? Where is where is Anton? Anton, Anton hello. Hi. <laughs> How about protein? Uh, the other, uh, the other Anton. Sorry. <laughs> anyway, so, uh, so we, you're you're trying to make it yes, easier. We work in this direction. Okay. Another question from Jan. Uh, <clears throat> isn't it easier to draw so code wouldn't limit creativity? Uh, like if you mm. skip the pen and paper sketching uh, stage. Isn't it easy to sketch and sketch? I never say that uh, we skipped the panel and paper. Uh, so sketch. you always start with, with some you, the design uh, uh, there is uh, a, Yes, there, is application. there are design process. You start with no sketching at all. You just uh, study all user cases you have. You just study uh, existing solutions. All right. After yeah. that, you will sketch and every design and use their own tool. Like uh, I like to use paper and pencils, so you just sketch the solution. And then you have in mind approximately what you have to do. Okay. But then you make a code. Code uh, uh, does a lot of work for you, but only on the stage when you try to think through design. 
not just uh, yeah. create some some crazy stuff. Okay, something something completely different from Vladimir. Um, does company have a size, or it just fills all available space, like by default component that you create? It depends on component. We try to uh, inherit grid in all components. So every component have a modificator uh, calls, and when you create new component, you just inherit grid, and they say this component should be three column wide, four column wide, mm -hmm. or whole page wide. You can control it with the modificators. But is it possible to just drop your component and it will know what to do because of a context? Mm. Because sometimes it's, I, I, it's I just easier. I have to remember some component. Um, we don't use component without grid. Uh, all our components are stick to the grid, so okay. it's if so, you yeah. don't put the modificator, there's always default value of it, so it doesn't work that way. Yeah, I guess it's just a different mindset. Yeah, you, have, you yeah. adjusted it. Okay, we that's that's all for now. Um, thank you for giving this talk. Thank you.